Hello and a very warm welcome to the first ever running of the Britcar Dunlop Endurance E-Series presented by Brabham Automotive. We're at Spa Francorchamps and this is how the RacingRigs.co.uk start grid shapes up. David Brabham and Will Powell lock out the front row in a pair of Brabham BT62s. Isaac Rain and Sam Neary are on row two. Then Sharage and Alex Day complete the third row of the grid. And Dave Farrow is the highest placed qualifier in class three aboard his EDF Ginetta. RacingRigs.co.uk supplies simulator racing equipment for professional drivers and serious sim enthusiasts. Using the highest quality components, their rigs are designed to replicate real driving giving professional drivers the best training tools and sim enthusiasts the closest experience to real-life racing. And it's worth noting that racing rigs have some fantastic deals on current stock during the current pandemic lockdown. Visit racingrigs.co.uk for more information. So we're all set for 30 minutes of action here at the legendary Spa Francorchamps circuit. My name's Chris Hartley and I'm going to talk you through this inaugural event in the Brick Car Dunlop Endurance E-Series presented by Brabham Automotive. As the red lights go out and we get underway, the pole sitter is to the left of your picture in the blue and yellow BT62. David Brabham, though, coming under real pressure here from his teammate in the orange machine, Will Powell. He hands him off just about as they go to La Source for the first time, but there's carnage further back. It's a spin from Isaac Rain, who started third on the grid in the MACG Racing uh, Glickenhaus. That triggered a chain reaction. Alex Day's Mercedes got sent up into the air. And I think the two teammates, Charles and James Rainford, in their blue and white set, the odds got caught up in that as well. So Sam Neary tucks in behind the leaders for third. Ben Sharage in the other Glickenhaus has gone up to fourth place. A good start for Lee Frost in the white Simon Green Motorsport McLaren. He's gone from eighth up to fifth place. A place gained as well for Sean Cooper in the red track-focused McLaren. He's gone from seventh up to sixth. Then it's the red Ginetta of Farrow who continues to lead class three. And look at this as we've got James Rainford trying to squeeze past the Ginetta of Nicole Drought right in front of them on the way out of Lecomte. A spin for Cooper from sixth place. So that promotes Farrow to sixth place. This becomes the battle for seventh, and there's contact at the back of the group between the yellow Seat of James Bentley and the second of the blue and white Seats. That one driven by Charles Rainford. Looks like they were headed wide on the way into Rivage. There is the yellow number 24, Glickenhaus, of Isaac Grain. That's the driver that started third, had the spin on the way into La Source and triggered the, uh, the carnage. Now, whether he span under his own volition or was aided into that spin, I'm not sure, but it caused carnage and he's dropped from third down to, well, he was 18th. He's just picked up a couple of places, back up to 16th. Alex Day uh, was hurt in all of that as well. And from sixth on the grid, uh, Alex in the McLaren has now dropped down to 13th place. He's actually got a couple back. He was down in 15th position at one point earlier in the lap. And then the two Rainfords in the Seats were also delayed and actually sent into one another, but didn't lose as many places. What that gained from all of that uh, was Nicole Drought, who went from 16th up to 8th place. And that puts her currently third in Class 3. The more powerful, higher performance Class 1 cars continue to lead and they are glued together at the end of lap one as they make their way through the bus stop chicane. David Brabham leading the way here at the end of this first lap of the race, but only just two tenths of a second clear of his teammate who is all over him still on the way into La Source. Will Powell, you can see the brake discs glowing there on the way into the hairpin just off them in third place 1.7 seconds back is Sam Neary who's been a race winner uh, in the real life Brick Car Endurance Championship he's driven uh, the ABBA Racing BMW and their Mercedes alongside his father Richard who's a very experienced and very successful GT racer not just in Brick Car but in other forms of uh, national GT racing uh, celebrating his 18th birthday this week so happy birthday uh, for later in the week to Sam doing a good job here at the moment in that black Mercedes running in third place. Then it's Ben Sharich, the teammate to Isaac Grain, who had the bad start on the way into the source. He's in the other MACG racing at Glickenhaus. We've got Lee Frost going well in fifth place, sixth place, and continuing to lead class three then uh, is uh, this man in the 1-1-3 car. That is David Farrow in the EDF Motorsports back Ginetta. Had his first ever real-life race at the end of last season in the Brick Car Brands Hatch night races. Uh, his father, Eddie, is the man that runs the EDF motorsports team, so he's been in and around motorsport for most of his life. 
very little real life racing experience, although he did a very good job in Rob Baker's uh, souped up smart car at Brands Hatch at the end of last season. But he's obviously a very accomplished sim racer. He leads James Rainford in the category. There is your overall race leader, though, the former Le Mans winner, former Formula One racer, David Brabham. Here's a replay of the start where Brabham just about held on to his pole position. But watch for the carnage that's about to ensue behind. They're just at the back end of the Glicker now spinning. There, right up into the air and around on a 360 pirouette when Alex Day's car and the two Seats caught up in all of that as well. But everybody has continued to uh, keep going. We've got Sean Cooper at the back of the field, had a separate spin later on in the lap. So Brabham leading the way by just 0.4 of a second. Neary is just falling away from the top two a little bit in third place. Sharage fourth, Farrow and Rainford fifth and sixth, the highest place class three cars. And Alex Day recovering up to seventh place now. And on the graphic, you can see that Rainford has moved ahead of Farrow and into the class lead. So up to fifth place now. And there's a spin for Lee Frost, who was running well up in the top six. Now, he'd already dropped a couple of places with an unseen moment earlier on in the lap. And he's just uh, dropped several more with that spin. So the, uh, the white Lee Frost car, which qualified in a pretty handy eighth place, the McLaren has now dropped down out of the top ten, down to 12th place. So here we go on the way into La Source. David Farrow lunges up the inside and gets his class lead back, but he drifts a little bit wide coming out of the hairpin. And now the run towards the world famous Eau Rouge. The Seat gets a better run coming out of the corner, too deep into the hairpin. I think went Farrow. It was a brave move. And they're about to be swallowed up by the resurgent Alex Descartes, a class one car, much more top end speed, much more performance in the uh, McLaren, but a good recovery this. And going very slowly in the foreground is the fourth place car, Ben Sharage. Going very slowly at the Kemble Straight. Day gets past the Ginetta and the Seat, and they all get past Ben Sharage. And Farrow snatches the class three lead back from Rainford. So in the space of about five seconds, that's from seventh to fourth for Alex Day. And it's gone in the opposite direction for Ben Sharage, who, unseen, must have gone off the road somewhere and has now dropped down uh, to seventh place in the blink of an eye. Still, we've got this tassel going on for the Class 3 lead between James Rainford, who is all over the back of that Ginetta of David Farrow. Here's a replay then of the moment that Alex Day uh, got past both the David Farrow Ginetta and the Seat and then just glided through to pick up fourth place as they all went past the recovering Ben Sharich. Right, we're back live with them now. So Alex Day in the foreground up to fourth place. Fifth and sixth, nose to tail again, and almost onto the grass there was the Seat of Rainford as he tried to find a way back ahead of Farrow. Coming back at them in the more powerful Glickenhaus is Ben Sharich, but he can't find a way through at the moment because they're battling so hard and they're not leaving any gaps here as they begin to descend towards the very quick final sector of the lap and there's a spin for Alex Day right in front of the three of them he recovers it beautifully and luckily there was no contact between the four cars and there in the background Ben Sharage I think is about to sweep up the inside of both Farrow and Rainford yes indeed he has through the quick section unleashing the power of the Glickenhaus uh, to gain all of the places back that he lost so he started the lap fourth he's going to finish the lap in fourth place but that doesn't really tell the tale of what was a pretty frantic lap for Sharage. So they come out of the bus stop chicane. This battle for fifth place continues. This battle for the class three victory and a spin again in the background for Alex Day. And look at this, swooping around the outside of the Porsche Cayman is the yellow set of James Bentley through Blanchimont. What a fantastic move that was to get ahead of Peter Spano in the Roman Racing Porsche Cayman. He uh, manages to slow the car down in time to make the bus stop chicane. But that was a terrific piece of driving there, the quickest part of the circuit. So James Bentley uh, will move to 13th place. Max Coates has gained a place up to 11th position. In fact, they're all moving up one there in that midfield because Lee Frost, who had a spin on the previous lap, has headed for the pit. So Lee Frost uh, is out of the running at the moment in the pit lane. David Brabham has stretched his advantage at the front of the field by 1.2 seconds. We're now looking at the 11th place car of uh, Max Coates, who has had several very competitive seasons in the Renault UK Clio Cup as a real championship contender. Just missed out on the 2019 championship by the narrowest of margins. And has been a very uh, strong runner alongside Guy Colclough in the DAT Racing Sat in a number of brick car entries as well during the 2019 season. So he's going well in the top six within the class. 
uh, the class three cars which make up around about half the field They're being led still by this battle between Rainford who's back ahead now of David Farrow as they go down to Poo on the left hander here which used to have a huge gravel trap to the right but these days has a very large wide runoff area and Ben Sharridge in the foreground getting away from them now in that fourth place car the class one car so less than half a second separating these two at the start of the uh, sector but it's much less than that on the way through the Levan uh, chicane down towards Stavolo they go in the background you can just see the other Seat uh, the Charles Rainford driven CCK Seat Leon is just starting to catch these two because they're fighting each other so hard I think they're actually holding each other up a little bit so he's third in the class at the moment and he's not quite on terms with them but if they continue to hold each other up to battle the way they are he might just close that gap he's in uh, seventh place yeah he's got the gap to under 2.7 seconds now Alistair Bolton in the sole Class 2 car is in 8th place. There he is, right on cue, uh, running in the Praga R12. This new livery for the 2020 season. Alistair part of uh, the VR motorsport team that ran the Praga with great success to the Class 1 championship title in the Brick Car Endurance uh, Championship 2019. Had uh, some race wins and they finished 4th in the overall championship in their inaugural season. Uh, with the Praga in brick car racing. So Alistair part of that team going pretty well in eighth place. Graham Roberts and Max Coach rounding out the top ten just behind him as we go back to the leaders then, to David Brabham. To David Brabham, son of Sir Jack Brabham, the 1959, 1960 and 1966 Formula One world champion. Sir Jack actually had a win here at Spa in the 1960 Belgian Grand Prix on his way to his second world title. That was aboard a Cooper Climax. The BT62 that these two are driving is a car developed by David Brabham and his team. Uh, he formed Brabham Automotive a couple of years ago in 2018. Built this as a road car and it's become a very successful already race car, winning on debut at the Brick Car Brands Hatch Night Races at the end of last season as we go back to this tussle for fifth place in the Class 3 lead between James Rainford in the Seat and the red EDF Motorsports Gineta of David Farrow. Uh, they've both had their turn in the lead. The quickest in qualifying of the pair was the Ginetta, but at the moment it's the Seat with his nose in front. They actually look like they're caught back up a little bit to Ben Sharad. Yes, just about 1.3 seconds behind, and they run down towards this incredibly quick left-hander at Puon, all the way to the cars over the front wheels. The back ends go light as you continue to turn through this double apex left-hander. Take the cars right to the edge of the circuit, drag it back across then to take the ideal entry line into this right-left section through Le Fan. And then again, the circuit begins to drop downhill on the way towards Stavolo 1 and Stavolo 2, another double apex uh, corner. So for now, David Farrow cannot find a way back into the lead of Class 3, but he's very much hanging on to the tail of uh, James Rainford. Charles Rainford is uh, father, a historic GT racer, uh, not quite able to catch them up in the Seat, the second of the Seats. He's about three seconds, 3.2 seconds behind now. So he's lost about half a second or so on this lap to the, uh, the pair ahead of him. Coming up in a couple of minutes to the halfway stage in this 30-minute race. There's the 1-3-4 Ginetta of Nicole Drought, who went from 16th to 8th on the first lap, but she's dropped down to 13th place now. Uh, then you've got the recovering Isaac Rain in 14th, and you're looking at Dal Albert now, who's in 15th place in uh, his Ginetta. And uh, Dale is currently well clear of Sarah Moore, the 2018 Brick Car Endurance Champion, in 16th place. Alex Day after his spins down in 17th. Sean Cooper after his spin and visit to the pit lane, 18th, and Lee Frost still in the pits. Uh, right there, you can't, you cannot miss it. Is Sarah Moore in the bright pink Tockwith Motorsports Ginetta, as I say. Uh, a former champion in Brick Car, racing very successfully last season in the W Series uh, International Single Seater Championship. And there, I mentioned him just a few minutes ago, is Sean Cooper with quite a bit of damage to the left hand side of the McLaren, but a long way down the field now. He's back on track at least, though, Sean, who finished third in the Brick Car Endurance Championship a couple of years ago with Mike McCullum in the Track Focus KTM Crossbow. Got a glimpse of the leaders there. Still only uh, just over a second between David Brabham and Will Powell. Uh, still, we have Sam Neary on his own in third place. Well clear of Ben Charich in fourth. You're looking at Max Coates, who's up into eighth place overall now. And that puts him fourth in class three. And back to the battle between the Seat of James Rainford 
and the Ginetta of David Farrow for the lead of Class 3. They've been at it all the way through this race, more or less, apart from, I think, the first half a lap where Rainford got caught up in the melee at La Source. But since then, he's been either right on the case of or just in front of David Farrow and the continue to run within a couple of tenths of a second of each other in fifth and sixth places overall. Quite a number of more powerful cars behind them as well. So doing a good job here. Now he's Charles Rainford getting on. He's closing the gap. He's down uh, just 1.8 seconds behind them now on that uh, split. So he's had a better start to this lap, Charles Rainford. Desperate to get into the battle, I would imagine, and make this a three-way scrap for the lead of Class 3. He's got a real pressure from behind because Max Coates is fourth in class and eighth overall is 24 seconds behind him and having a bit of a lonely race at the moment although he's got the class 2 Praga of Alistair Bolton just a few seconds behind him in ninth James Bentley has had a lively start to this race completing the top 10 and then it's real life brick car race from former Fun Cup champion Graham Roberts 11th Isaac Rain back up to 12th place now from Peter Spardo in 13th here we go David Farrow having a big long hard stare down the outside on the way to the bus stop chicane the Seat Hold station, and I think Farrow headed right for the pits, did he? Yes, he's dropped out of the picture. There he is, he's gone into the pit lane. So David Farrow into the pits in the Ginetta, and that is going to put uh, Charles Rainford up to sixth place when he gets through the next timing beam. And has that put pay to uh, the chances of the Ginetta, the pole sitter David Farrow taking a class victory, quite possibly. Back to the leaders then, David Brabham under more and more pressure here. This is as close as it's been since the start of the race now between him and Will Powell, the pair drove the BT62 to its maiden victory on its maiden race at Brand Satch at the end of last season. The real life Kia uh, is powered by a 5.4 litre V8 engine, produces around about 700 brake horsepower, and they're planning on producing a limited run of 70 of those cars. David Brabham uh, has uh, a glittering sports car career, culminating in victory at uh, the Le Mans 24 hour race, Le Mans winner back in 2009 for Peugeot. He's had three class wins at Le Mans as well. He had uh, 24 Grand Prix starts for uh, Brabham, the family run team, and for Simtech as well. Never had a really competitive car in Formula One, but his championship victories include titles in the All Japan GT Championship is a former British Formula 3 champion, a Macau GP winner, an ALMS class champion as well. So a glittering career in both single seaters and I suppose more famously in sports cars and fantastic to have the Australian and these uh, Brabhams on the grid. They continue to run very close together at the front of the field. There is the third place car just about 20 seconds behind them now. The black Mercedes, the uh, team Abacar of young Sam Neary. And in the background, you saw that he, in fact, all of the top three have now put a lap on the pink Ginetta of Sarah Moore. And here is the aerial view of this fantastic run down what was the old start finish straight into one of the most famous corners and sequences of corners in world motorsport through a rouge. You drop down, you climb up, you go over the brow, flat out all the way through Radion and onto the Kemmel straight. Uh, right, fourth place, Ben Sharich, who has found himself some clear track now in the Glickenau, so he makes his way into La Source. He's been on the podium in the Brick Car Endurance Championship as a regular co-driver to Johnny McGregor, who's the team owner of Mac G Racing. And normally, uh, in real life, race the Tyrannis, but in the E Series, as we go on board with Ben now, through, fantastic shot this, through a rouge over the brow at Radion, keeping it as buried as you dare. And uh, yes, they're racing this Glickenhaus SCG 003C here at uh, Spara Car, which was launched about five years ago as a limited edition GT3 machine. And you get the view on the way after that long straight into the right left sequence of the Com, right then through Malmade, and then the circuit begins to drop down significantly on the way into what's a wide hairpin, but a hairpin nonetheless at Rivage. Fantastic corner this is. You get great views if you take the trek across the Rivage of the whole of the circuit. You can see as far as the pit lane on the other side, the side of the forest. You drop down through the unnamed left hander uh, over the curves and then plummeting down towards Puan now. Again, bravery and precision required here. Not as much as they used to be when there was a huge gravel trap to unnerve you on the right hand side. But nonetheless, it is a very, very quick corner this. Nicely driven by Ben Sharage, who now takes us down towards uh, Le Fan. Uh, so Ben with uh, trophies and a reasonable amount, not huge amounts, but a reasonable amount of real life endurance racing experience, most notably with Johnny McGregor in the Tyrannis. 
Uh, he is, though, competing on a budget in terms of sim racing. He hasn't got that much sim racing experience, and it's all fairly recent. And apparently, he's only got an ancient, what he describes as an ancient Logitech G27 wheel, which is placed at the moment on an even older 40-pound wooden desk, which he bought from Argos. So not exactly the, uh, the most modern of rigs, but he's doing a good job here and taking some nice lines and looking pretty steady in fourth place. Now you can see just how quick it is at the back of the circuit here through the forest section, through uh, Blanchimont, down to the bus stop chicane there. You really have to hit the brakes hard here. It's so easy to outbreak yourself. Right then, left, a little uphill climb on the way out of there. And it's a gradual uphill climb to the end of the lap to begin that run into the source. So great views on board there at the uh, the Glicken House. There are two versions of this real-life car. One has a 3.5-litre twin-turbo engine, a Honda V6. The other has a 4.4-litre BMW V8 version. And the quickest version is over 750 brake horsepower. Now, look at this. It's a battle between two different cars, two different classes, but it is full position. Max Coates in eighth place trying to fend off the Praga of Alistair Bolton, who takes to the grass here as he tries to find a way past uh, Max Coates. But Max, having none of this, keeps the Seat on the racing line and uh, fends off what, in theory, should be a much quicker Praga. So Max Coates, uh, runner-up in the 2019 Renault UK Clio Cup, coming under more pressure here. And at the inside comes the Praga. Alistair Bolton finally gains the place, but he nearly has a spin right in front of the bows of the Seat. And that puts him immediately back down a place or two. In fact, Isaac Rain has got past him as well. Back up to ninth place now for Isaac. He was right at the back of the field at the end of lap one in the other uh, Glickenhaus. There you got a glimpse of him in the number 24 car. So uh, Isaac Rain doing a good job. You are now looking at a pretty close battle that's going on between Nicole Drought in 13th place and Peter Spano in 14th. The gap just around about one second between the Ginetta and uh, the Porsche. Peter is going to be racing uh, with Brick Car for the first time when hopefully the season eventually, the real season, eventually gets uh, underway. He's going to be competing in the brand new Brick Car Trophy Series, which has had an awful lot of interest. And so uh, we absolutely can't wait to see how that one uh, pans out. Well, we just can't wait to go real life racing again. But for now, we are very much enjoying the Brick Car Dunlop Endurance E Series presented by Brabham Automotive. We've got just under nine minutes of the race left to run. We go back to the Ginetta of Sarah Moore. A lap down now, one of the class three cars, this at uh, the Topworth Motorsports Ginetta, winner of the uh, Brick Car Endurance Championship two years ago, alongside uh, Matt Greenwood, a driver that she coached since his. Uh, karting days, a young driver that's come up through the Tokwith uh, Academy family run team with all their success. Nigel Moore, uh, older brother, a former Brick Car champion as well, a couple of years prior to that. And here's Sean Cooper in the rather battered uh, track focused McLaren. He runs the track focused team but goes off there, loses the back end of the car. I suspect it's ill handling because of the damage that he picked up on the first lap of the race, and that really does put pay to any hopes of a good result for Sean Cooper. Now, we go back to the leaders. The gap has opened up to about a second and a half, but they've got traffic to come here, and this could be tricky for David Brabham because he's the first to get to the traffic, and he's also coming up to a battle between James Bentley and Graham Roberts in the Seat Leon and uh, De Ginetta, respectively. And Graham Roberts has been trying to find his way past the Seat for a couple of laps now. They're running 11th and 12th, and if they're so focused on each other, they might not be looking in the mirrors here. But they just leave enough room for one BT62 to come through. Will Powell a little bit more delayed, though, and has to take uh, an unusual line to get past them, get in between them through the trickiest part of the, uh, the course as well. And that will probably cost him half a second or so, or maybe not, actually, because he's kept his foot absolutely buried there, holds it under braking on the way to the chicane, and actually does a good job there, remains within a second of David Brabham through the traffic. So still hoping to win this race. It does very much look as though it's going to be a Brabham BT62-1-2 in the inaugural race. In the background, you can see that Graham Roberts found a way past the Seat of James Bentley as well. So in amongst the, uh, the chaos of the traffic coming through, Graham managed to move up into what is now 11th place aboard the EDF Motorsports Ginetta, the white 112 machine, right through Eau Rouge. Uh, growing that gap a little bit more now, David Brabham. A good start to the lap. Was 0.8 of a second ahead. He's now just 1.1 seconds clear. And we've got Alistair Bolton back ahead of Max Coates after his spin. So he's recovered in the foreground. So he's ninth. Max Coates is 10th. They're the next two cars to be lapped by the two race leaders. Max Coates, though, is pretty much hanging on to the back of the Praga R1T. 
Alex de Bolt and part of Vincent Randall's team to say they were very successful in their first year with the Praga, racing in a UK championship in Brick Cup, having run that car successfully for a number of years on the continent in things like the Dutch Supercar Challenge. Uh, right, we're now going to look at the battle between Graham Roberts, who in the background got ahead of James Bentley at the, at the end of the previous lap. So 11th and 12th they are. In terms of class honours, James Rainford, fifth overall, leads class three. Charles Rainford, sixth overall, is second in the class. David Farrow, who went into the pits, is third in the class. But he's catching them up. He's 11.2 seconds behind. Uh, but he was 20 seconds behind after his pit stop. Is he got, has he got enough time, though, to catch them up? Just over five minutes to go. It's going to be a real tall order, this. Uh, you've got Isaac Rain charging back through the field in eighth place. Ninth place, Alistair Bolton, the sole Class 2 car. Max Coates, 10th. Graham Roberts, who you've been watching in 11th. James Bentley, 12th. And we're now watching Nicole Drought, who is in 13th place, having pulled... Uh, three more seconds clear of Peter Spano. They were within a second of each other last time we saw them, but Nicole has now edged away and is clearing 13th. Spano 14th. Alex Day trying to recover through the pack late on in the race is 15th in the Class 1 uh, Mercedes, but still quite a way back on these two. And there you can see on the graphic to the left, up to 7th place has come Isaac Rain. So Isaac Rain up to 7th place now has got ahead of David Farrow. Uh, so Isaac really charging through, and he could pick up another place or two between now and the chequered flag, the way he's going. He's 18 years old, some karting experience. He actually grew up in Melbourne. Uh, he entered the Ginetta Genius Scholarship, but just missed out on that for a funded drive in 2015. So since then, he's concentrated on his engineering skills, and he's a Rolls-Royce Aerospace Apprentice and a race day volunteer with Matt G Racing as well. You're looking at him now, charging back through the pack in seventh place. Eight and a half seconds behind the side of Charles Rainford with just under four minutes to go, but he's much, much quicker. On the graphic, you can see as well that Max Coates has gone back ahead of Alistair Bolton uh, in that battle for ninth place between the Seats and the uh, Praga R1T. So really, really good dice there having. Swapped a couple of times that. Back to the leaders. Uh, how's it looking? 1.1 seconds clear now is David Brabham. So it's stayed static really for the last lap or so. At times it's been down to a couple of tenths. The biggest gut there's been between these two at any point, I think, was just about a second and a half. But most of the time it's hovered around the one second mark. So has Will Powell been playing the waiting game here? Is he going to strike later on? He's been close, but he's never really attacked or got side by side. David Brabham has just been able to fend him off and keep him at arm's length as he makes his way uh, through uh, Pouon now and towards uh, Le Fan. It's going to be touch and go, actually, whether they get one or two more laps at the end of this one, depending on when they get to the start or finish line. It'll be pretty tight. I think it'll probably be just one more at the end of this, but we'll take, take a view on that when we get them across the line. Uh, in around about 50, 45, 50 seconds time. So just starting to stretch away now. Smooth as you like is David Brabham. He got pole position in the qualifying session uh, by a pretty uh, healthy margin. Uh, was nearly four tenths clear of Will Powell. Bit of two minutes, 17.12 second lap. Two minutes, 17.5 for Will Powell. And the next best was Isaac Rain, third quickest in qualifying with a 2.18.45. Right into the chicane. Two minutes, 20 seconds left on the clock. It's going to be tight coming through and across the line with just about two minutes and 14 seconds left on the clock. So they're not quite going to squeeze another lap in at the end of this one. It will be the final lap of the race. And as it's been ever the case, it's led by David Brabham in the BT62, shadowed. Uh, by the sister car of Will Powell, uh, looking to make it a Brabham Motorsport 1-2. They won with the real-life car in the first ever real-life race, and it looks as though, uh, let's whisper it because we've still got a long lap to go here at Spa, but it looks as though they're going to take victory in the maiden running of the Brick Car Dunlop Endurance E-Series presented by Brabham Automotive. Uphill towards the end of the Kemmel Strait, they come on the brakes, down a few gears on the way into Le Com. Keep it nice and tidy through there. Get the acceleration right. Hover it through Malmedy and then take it to the curbs as you begin the descent, the steep descent down through Rouvage and all the way down through Pouon and the exit to Pouon. It's all downhill until you get to uh, the Le Fan chicane. So Brabham, one and a half seconds clear, give or take. This is as big a gap as he's had now. So he really has got his head down on this final lap and it looks like Will Powell has uh, run out of steam in trying to 
in terms of trying to get the race victory or at least have a go for the race victory here. There was a bit of traffic to deal with. So that is the Ginetta of David Farrow, who is working hard himself to try and catch Charles Rainford. He's got the gap down to 6.4 seconds now. What he really needs to do, David, is stay ahead of these two. Otherwise, this is going to be his last lap as well. So if he can stay ahead of them, he'll have one more lap at the end of this to try and catch Charles Rainford. And he's absolutely flying. He's down to five and a half seconds behind now. So it is not out of the question with a long lap that he could do this. He's got a lap and a quarter to go to try and... I don't think he's going to win the class, but he could at least get second place in the class and overtake Charles Rainford. James Rainford, meanwhile, leads the class fifth overall and trying to hold, hold on to fifth place from a charging Isaac Rain. He's 5.6 seconds adrift now, but with five seconds left on the clock for the final time into the bus stop chicane comes David Brabham. He accelerates, he sees the chequered flag and he's going to go across the line to take victory in the first ever running of the Brick Car Dunlop Endurance E-Series presented by Brabham Automotive. It's a Brabham Automotive 1-2 with Will Powell coming home in second place. Uh, there was going to be another lap, though, for David Farrow. He didn't quite get lapped by them. It was close, but he is going to get one more lap out of this. You've seen James Rainford, the class leader, going through onto his final lap of the race. You're looking at Alistair Bolton in 11th place. So while the front runners have taken the flag, others have still got a lap to go here, including this man, James Rainford, in fifth place. Only 3.1 seconds clear now of Isaac Rain. There he is in the background in the Glickenhaus. What a recovery drive this has been, having been plum last at one point down in 18th position. He is doing a great job here, Rain. And yes, he's got a more powerful car in theory, but he's had to work his way through an almighty amount of traffic. Here we're looking at David Farrow. He's got the gap down to less than five seconds now to Charles Rainford. Charles being caught here in this battle for second. He should just have enough time to hang on to this, but if he makes a mistake somewhere, then Farrow is going to be all over him. So we're looking at the 119 car in fifth place of James Rainford, and I don't think he's going to be able to fend off Isaac Rain, who's with him already here, shadowing him, looking up the inside. He hesitates not, he looks at the inside, but he's going to have to wait for now. But drifting wide is the Seat, and there gifts him the place. He knows he's in a different class, he wants to win the class, he doesn't want to get involved in a, an incident on the final lap, so Rain goes through. And that will be the end of his recovery, but what a recovery it's been. Up to fifth place it, it is for him. Rainford continues to lead Class 3, which is the most important thing. He's in uh, sixth place. He's uh, then got a reasonable gap back to Charles Rainford, who's now less than three seconds clear of David Farrow. You'll almost see him in the background, I think, coming up to try and get this second place late on. But I think he's just going to run out of time here. He'll be disappointed, of course, having been on pole position, having led the race, having had this great tussle in the first half of the race with the man you're looking at, James Rainford and having to go into the pits, recovered from that. He's still get, going to get on the podium, but it is going to be a Class 3 victory for James Rainford, who takes the Seat over the line. Victory for him and for the CCK team. And there we have confirmation of the final results. David Brabham, Will Powell and Sam Neary on the podium. Ben Sharich, Isaac Crane, fourth and fifth. James Rainford, Charles Rainford and David Farrow, the top three in Class 3. Max Coates and James Bentley complete the top ten. Great racing here at Spa. Hope you've enjoyed it and we hope you'll join us next time for the Brick Car Dunlop Endurance E-Series presented by Brabham Automotive.